round of applause for Mabel. Can I have my henchmen bring my stools? My request for Adrian and Danny, please be seated. Please, Danny. Please, someone. Yes, I call. Etika. All right, so um, Danny and Adrian actually graciously asked me to do a speech. What? You know, they begged me. They said, please, Mabel, please do a speech. <laughs> I lied, actually. I actually said, no, I have to do a speech <laughs> on behalf of two of them. So here goes. There's a boy from the South who once was quite little who was bold and rambunctious and not quite an angel not a room full of toys like most other children for his toys filled his house like Hamleys of Britain there's a girl from the south hey, sorry from the north who came from an island who was bold and rambunctious and cutely defiant. She did not take to her food like most other children, for she ate everything from the hall to the kitchen. Of all of the great powers the boy could beckon, the greatest one by far was one of determination. He could not leave tall buildings or outrun a speeding train, but he could get what he wanted from his intent and his brain. Whoa! The power the girl eventually did wake resulted from every treat, fare and partake. What emerged from a thousand movable feasts was a culinary prowess to tame the most ferocious beasts. From his castle of clouds, the boy often dreamt of a life that was good and just and content. Of a land of big bikes, old cars, and a ukulele. Of a smart, beautiful, kick-ass girl he would marry. The island girl dreamt of faraway places, from cities to countries where one leaves no traces. She flew away to a place they wear clogs, but made her way back to kiss a couple of frogs. <laughs> One day in an island, they called it Fangkor. The boy met the girl near the waves and the shore. But it did not quite spark. No fireworks boom! In fact, there'd be more chemistry between the boy and the broom. <laughs> so the boy and the girl went separate ways. For sometimes it takes the right time and day. He went on to play with his cars and his hogs. And she went on to kiss a couple more frogs. <laughs> then one day, your paths eventually did cross and interest did spark from his side of course the girl from the island said i'll just be your friend the boy smiled and nodded but he had a different plan for the boy did remember the power he had and pursued determinedly and never felt bad. We are but just friends, she said repeatedly. He smiled and he nodded and said, one day you'll see. The boy wooed the girl every day cleverly with charm, wit by friendship disguised expertly. Then poof, one day, he went to find Singapore. And she realized she missed him. 
and said, I want more. <laughs> and so it began, the romance of friends. With well, the boy smiled and nodded, for the plan had not end. For he knew it was she, the girl he would marry. While well, she called him, hey, this one my boyfriend, obliviously. <laughs> then on one humid night, when the wind was just right, the boy wore his sarong and waited wide-eyed. The girl walked in the door and said, I'm home, baby. The boy smiled and nodded and got on one knee. The girl from the island said, yes, immediately, for she loved her baby, the boy from JB. <laughs> he lifted his sarong so he could get up, you see, and sang in his heart like he was a cast member of Glee. <laughs> so here ends the tale of the Wonder Boy who had the power of smarts and determination to deploy. Who swooped the girl up to the castle of clouds to build a life together and to also make out. So here we are tonight, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, celebrating the boy and the girl so happily. But just when you think it's all gonna end, the boy smiles and nods, for he has a different plan.
will take the load. There, the future, fill it with.